shot a dead bear. A dead oh, bear? Yeah. Dead bear? And we were on the water. No, this was in the. We put a drive on that in Pennsylvania. One day bear season. Cabin did. Just walk. Ninety down at the uh, Borgonia Hill climb. It's a 43rd running of this, and then, as usual, Earl will be sitting on top of the heat for the points runoff here. You're only three points down from Wade Williams, and I understand you're parked right next to him. Are you checking him out, or is that accident? Uh, we're checking each other out. Is that right? That's the way it goes. Well, Earl, what's the hill look like after all this rain and stuff we've had? Well, you could say we've got the hill wet down today, so there won't be any dust today. Are you going to change gears, or you just run one all the time? I'm going to start with what I thought I should have which is what's on it now, and if that doesn't work, I'll change my gearing. Earl, I understand you started hill climbing in 1955. What was the year you won your first national championship? The first national pro championship was 1968. Okay, and you started amateur hill climbing in 55, and then when did you no, turn? Amateur was 1961. I didn't. I didn't have a motorcycle in 55. Oh, okay, I'm I, sorry. I had a wife in 55. <laughs> yeah, I recognize that. <laughs> When you won your first national win? Uh, 1968. Okay. Well, let's back up on that. I won the first national in Canada in 1965. Canadian national. Okay. And then you won your first national championship in? The USA national in 1968. Okay. And you've been pretty strong ever since then, running right in the top, what, one, two, and three, probably? Well, anywhere from one to seven. <laughs> Okay, now you've won nine national championships, right? Grand national championship, right. and you're after your tenth one this year. We're looking for number ten, and uh, I don't know where it's out there or not, but we'll look for it, try to get it. Well, after the effort you've made always when the chips were down, and we know you're going to be in the hunt, that's for sure. How's the bike running? The bike's running good today. I had to do a little repair work on it last week because it was a little out of tune last week. Well, we know you're riding a Beezer. You want to describe it for me? Sure. Uh... Let's take a look at it here. What do you want to look at first? Well, everybody's always interested in the chassis because that's what they see mostly. Uh, you might want to describe how a hill climber is quite a bit different from a street bike. Okay, well, a street bike, the rear wheel sits clear up here, about right there. And uh, the hill climber, you have to have it so much longer so you don't tip it over backwards going up a steep hill. 
and uh, it's got a big oh, yeah. rear sprocket on it. And uh, we don't run any transmission gears, we run direct drive, so we're running in high gear. And that's the reason for the big sprocket here. And uh, then you get up to the motor, it's got 90% nitro mix in it, and uh, pretty high performance all the way through. Uh, pretty high compression pistons, uh, pretty radical camshafts, and uh, Grand Prix racing carburetors that work good on fuel, nitro. But this started out life as a 650 twin, right? This started from the factory in England as a PSA 650 Lightning. In, uh, this one started in 1971. Okay, and you bored it out, did you stroke it probably? Well, we bore and stroked both. We are allowed 800 cc's, and this one's 790 or a little better right now. Okay. And you're running uh, nitromethane fuel, percentage-wise, straight or what? Uh, around 90, 92% nitro, and the rest alcohol or something else to make the nitro ignite better. Okay. Now, this is not a modified street bike. It is a specially engineered, designed strictly for one thing only he'll come in, right? It's really good for only one thing, and one thing only has to go up a hill as fast as possible. Now, who built it? I built it. you done all the design work and the shop work and everything yourself? 99.9% .9 I built. Well, it's a beautiful work of art, that's for sure, Earl. Earl, we wish you lots of luck today. We hope you win your in the 10th uh, Grand National Championship. Do uh, you have anything you want to tell the crowd? Oh, I'll think on that for a minute here. Uh, just hope the crowd enjoys today's races and hope they come back next year and the year after. And uh, one other thing I think the crowd doesn't appreciate is how much the club participates in an event like this of putting an event on, the Dayton Motorcycle Club. It's an enormous amount of work goes into an event like this. Well, just like you, Earl, it's a labor of love for us also because we're all bikers at heart. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Earl Bowlby. Thanks, Earl. Okay. The crowd's coming early this year. Bob lifted the sun's out and everybody's out riding. I'm at Pitts talking to Tommy Reiser out of Columbus, Ohio. Tommy's been a veteran hill climber for how many years, Thomas? Oh, I think this is coming around somewhere around 20 now. Okay, now this is about the 43rd running. So when was your first trip down here to uh, Devil's Staircase Hill Climb? Well, I want to tell you that 1957. Now that don't really mean a whole lot, but that's the first time I fell off down here. So <laughs> I remember it real well. Well, Tom, I've seen you wrapped up in plaster socks before, and here you are again. So what happened this time? Oh, just another one of those things when you're trying to go for it. Why you just left it on just a little bit too long and come out on the wrong end. Well, you were in the hunt, too. You're pretty high in the National Championship point standings, aren't you? Well, I was uh, number four, and uh, this year was only about two or three out of number two and three, so there's not too much span between all the riders. They're only one or two points apart from the first four. Well, when I first walked up here, you said something about getting ready to start the bike. Who in the hell is going to ride that dude? Well, my team got it all ready, just kind of like a present for me, so the bike's sitting there all brand new, just, just ready to go. and. Uh, We've got Randy and uh, Bob Cassadine from uh, Massachusetts, so, so them boys are ready to go today, and if they need a backup, they're going to use mine. Oh, okay, that's great. That's good sportsmanship, like. So uh, how long are you going to be wrapped up in this plaster sock? Well, doctor uh, said it's set up real good, and he's hoping maybe four months at, uh, on the outside, and I'll be out walking and ready to go. So for next year, and we're looking forward to Goshen. That's the first one of the year. Okay, so it looks like 1991, you're going to be back riding again, then. Is that what you're saying? Oh yeah, yeah. This is just a just a temporary setback. I think all the riders have to look forward to this one time. I hope they never have to do it, but I think if they do do it, they've got to just sit back and take it on a positive note. It could happen to anybody. There's just so many little tricks. Well, I heard a guy by the name of Mario Rose say one time, "There ain't no race driver until he's done some cheat time." You've done your share of cheat time. Well, we've had our share, but it's all come out real good. Had real good doctors and. Uh, Luckily, I didn't have to go to the same one, so I don't have that real negative output on the doctor. Well, let's get a commercial in here, Tom. How's things going in the shop up here in Columbus? Well, uh, it's like I tell the customers. We're still doing real good, and 
we're still in the business. And uh, he said, how, they came in, they said, how do you get doing, how do you keep doing that? And I said, well, you just start a little earlier and quit a little later. <laughs> Come on, let's uh, name, address, and telephone number, Tommy. Riser Cycle in uh, Columbus, Ohio. And uh, phone number's in the phone book. So just look under Riser, we'll be there. What type of work you do? Just the Harley Davidson. Now, the only thing we want to work on. So if you don't have a Harley, don't call me. Okay, if you like hill climbing and ride a Harley, the place to go and do some talking and get that bike worked on is up at Riser's Bike Shop. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. Good talk to me. And you take care of yourself and watch out for them plastic sticks there. <laughs> okay. talking to John Williams out of Canada who's the uh, chairman of the board of the Williams Racing Department up here his sons Greg and Wade both ride. Uh, tell us how kind of year you've had John. Uh, it's been a good year for me. Uh, I uh, packed it in the year before last and I went and rode my Harley all over the place enjoyed myself and I woke up one day and I said well that's something I'm missing so back it was hill climbing so it's been a full season for me this year and uh, I haven't got my first first yet, but uh, I've been real close, and I think uh, uh, I'm running in around fifth or sixth place, I think, for points over for uh, overall for the world champ. Uh, we're standing here beside the STP bike here. It's you, I know that you built this, John. You want to describe it for us? Well, it's a four-cylinder Honda. It was built by Lintner and Bush out of uh, Thornhill, Ontario, and. Uh, they, uh, they put the whole package together for me. It's fuel injected, it runs on 100 proof nitro, and believe it or not, the motor is 16 years old. It's an old 1973 Honda. And uh, this fellow up there, this Frank Littner, they, he, he's kind of his baby is these uh, 750 Hondas. He makes them go, he puts them in sprint cars and everything. And uh, we've got a real project going on this thing this winter because Greg is coming out of the 800 class, so that means there's gonna be three Williams at that war next year, so. Uh, not only going against the rest of the fellows, we're going to have to be out running each other. Well, John, let me ask you something. How old are you? Uh, what did Bolby tell you he was? I'm about the same. Is he 30, still 39 or what? <laughs> well, I think I think Bolby's uh, trailer partner was a guy by the name of Moses. I'm not real sure about that, though. <laughs> I'm 51. Well, John, let me ask you this, though. You're in tremendous shape. You look like you're about 25. Do you work hard at staying, uh, staying in shape? Oh, things are really tough up in Canada. you got to take any job you can get. I work in construction. I gotta get <laughs> okay. Okay. I can understand that then. Construction work is a tough, tough way to earn a living, and you're also very, very active. Well, I find it kind of lifestyle at least. A lot of people, uh, I don't know, when they get married, uh, they seem to it's picket fence and the barbecue on the weekend and uh, through the cases of beer and then back to work Monday. I don't have time for that. If I'm not racing, I get on my Harley and I go out and find some new roads somewhere. And, I'm, I'm just, uh, I have no time to be inactive. People ask me, well, did you see that program on TV? I forget what the television is. And you know something else? Well, they, uh, the way they get all the, the media is hyping up all the news about this going on and that going on. What I do is I turn the radio off, I turn the television off when the news comes on, I don't buy no more newspapers. I'm sick and tired of people talking down. I think we all got to get optimistic about what things are going on in life. Give me a synopsis of your career. How did you actually get involved in motorcycling and, and did you start right in with hill climbing or did something uh, eventually lead you down that road? Well, I, I rode bikes ever since I was, uh, well, at 12 years old, we used to sneak over to my friend's barn and his dad had a little Francis Barnett. I don't know if you ever heard of it or not, but most people haven't. And it had a little steel fender on the back and I'd sit on that and we'd sneak out on this bike and just tear around all over the place. But I've always ridden bikes, and then a friend of mine one day said, my car's blown up, I want to go down to Kitchener and see the Canadian Championship hill climb. I said, what? He said, a hill climb. And I, I didn't have a clue what a hill climb was. So we got there late, and I'll never forget, Charlie Jacobs from Bangor, Pennsylvania was on a Harley, and it was a 200-foot hill down in a little bowl like an amphitheater. And I'm walking towards this thing, and I hear this Harley just cranking, and I thought, my God, the hair's going up in the back of my neck. I come over the top, and I look down, and here Charlie Jacobs takes out of that hole. I turned to my buddy and I said, that's it. I know what I've been put on the surf for. I'm going hill climbing. Well, he laughed and uh, I started. I didn't know where to start and I got an old WR and an old Army Harley frame and uh, we started there and 
I think it was two years before I even got up to the string on any hill. Thank you very much for coming down. This is a 43rd running of the double staircase hill climb, and uh, it's getting to be quite an institution here in southern Ohio, and you're part of that institution. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's a real pleasure to come down here and to see how all the club, club members really work hard to make this event a first-class event. This, this event here is a credit to the sport of hill climbing. Oh, you are too, so we thank you very much, John. Take care and tell Wade that we hope he does some good today. Well, we're going to... Yeah, I got more.
him down. They got away from him, boy, and I'll tell you, he took an endo right over his head over his heel. Many keys turned in as we've had today. I've got a stack of keys up here that you wouldn't believe. So before you head to the parking lot, check your pockets. Well, he walked off here, and now he's set. Thank <laughs> you. 